giving the new MacBook Pro a full review, I wanted to spend some actual time on it doing some work, not only for all the content creation I do here on YouTube, but also for my freelance video and photography work. So today I'm going to bring you along for a pretty typical working day in my life and how this new MacBook Pro fits into that. Before we get started, let's talk about this new Mac. This is the 14 inch base model. So I've got the eight core CPU, a 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gig of storage. And you might be wondering why would I go for something like that if most of my workflows revolve around creative tasks, which often require a lot of power. But I've always been drawn to this notion of needing more. And if these Macs are everything Apple says they are, then I wanted to put that mindset to the test and see if I can indeed get away with the base model for all of my daily creative work. Oh, and I'm looking at making a bunch more of these day in the life videos. So if you like seeing how I use these products in everyday situations, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any. Anyway, let's get right into it. After getting up and showering, most days start for me around nine o'clock. But after checking my emails on my phone when I got up, which is a habit I'm trying to avoid, but here we are, I realized I actually had quite a lot to do today. So I was on the MacBook and working by 8.30. I know that's not crazy early, but I'm not one of these rise and grinders that's awake by 5 a.m. That's just not me. I'll make sure to feed Pocky too and to give him some attention. You've actually joined me on the perfect day for testing out this new MacBook Pro. I knew I had some freelance stuff coming in today, but I didn't realize how much. So I've got the whole hog. I've got some Zoom calls to do. I've got some photo editing to do, which I'll use Lightroom for. I've got a bunch of social visuals to make. So I'll use InDesign and Photoshop for those. I've got some of my own photography to do for Instagram. So I'll edit that too. And I've also got to start filming and editing this video you're watching right now. So I'll use Premiere Pro for that. So it's going to be a really good test today of all those sort of creative apps on this new MacBook Pro 14. And we'll see how it does. So let's just get right into it. First off, I'm jumping directly into a Zoom call to go over some video work I've got coming up next week. This has been in the making for quite some time. So we go over the final details and book in the relevant times for the client to turn up. And so I've got some time to set up beforehand. I'll use the wonderful iPad mini to take some notes in the meeting as the MacBook is being used for the video call. And as the MacBook has that new camera seated within the notch, I also asked if I looked any clearer on the other end, citing I had a new camera, to which they said maybe. I laughed it off to hide my pain and then moved on to today's tasks. I'm going to work on the social media edits first to get them sorted. These are often time dependent, so I like to get them completed as soon as possible and hand it back to the client. I'm using a combination of Photoshop, InDesign and a touch of Canva to get these over as quickly as possible. And this is where I first noticed the general speed of this new MacBook. Now I've worked on fast and new computers before, but there's something about this M1 Pro stuff which makes it feel super quick and nimble. Switching between Photoshop, InDesign and Chrome was really, really fast. And honestly, it made me feel like I was using a new iPhone rather than a new computer in a strange way. Everything was just kind of done without me or the computer having to really think about it. And I also wanted to touch on battery life quickly. I've been using this since half eight-ish this morning. It's about 10 past 11 now. And I started the day on 75% because I didn't charge it overnight or anything like that. And I'm down to 59% now, which is absolutely amazing because I've been jumping through all sorts of different apps. My old MacBook, I would plug into the wall pretty much immediately the second I opened anything because it just drained the battery really badly. But this has stayed really, really strong. So I'm going to keep an eye on battery life for the rest of the day. But so far, super, super impressed. Between 12 to one, I usually stop for some form of lunch. Today though, I'm actually having a meeting with Rachel to discuss what's going on with our little brand Kuroku. Luckily for me, that means a hugely short journey of going next door, so I don't need to bag up the MacBook at all. I'll just bring it with me. I say hello to her cat, get a cup of tea on the go and sit down to chat. For these styles of meetings, we'll usually decide what we're going to do for the next month or to look at some of Rachel's new design ideas that are sketched on her iPad. But today we're looking at some new product samples that have come in and we're deciding if we think they're good enough for a bulk order. We'll also usually end up talking for ages about things we'd like to do in the future as well or just reflect on things that are going quite well. Recently we worked with our good friend Knoopsy to release the Rise wallpaper pack, which we're super, super proud of. We spoke at length about how that went and how we can potentially make even more things like that moving forward. I'll link the wallpapers below if you do want to check them out. And if you've already picked them up, then we both thank you really deeply for that. 
by the time I'm home it's around 1.30 and the MacBook battery life is at 40% which is continually impressive considering all the things I've had on the go today. I've had some feedback on some work I did this morning so I'm going to get that sorted as quickly as possible so I can hand it back before the day is out. Rather than work on that beautiful new Mac screen though, which I really have been enjoying, I needed a little more space to get these edits right, so I hooked it up to my monitor through the resurrected HDMI port. At this point I also wanted to continue pushing the battery life so I didn't plug into power either. After getting the edits back to the client and while I wait for some more feedback, it's time for me to shoot some of my own photography of this new Mac for my Instagram. I've been really enjoying a purple look recently so I'm going to set that up on the left hand side of my desk and get some nice shots of the Mac. When I'm taking photos from my Instagram, I always like to use a variation of props to get a distinct look or feel across. This also helps things feel really consistent. I've been using these fake flowers a lot recently to blur out certain parts of the image and I really like the look it provides so I'm falling back on that again for today. Rachel also lent me this book called The Art of Hay Colour and the colours in there are beautiful so I'm trying my best to take inspiration from that too. Once the photos are taken I'll bring them into Lightroom on the Mac and I know it's silly but I can't overstate how useful it is to finally have the SD card reader back. I'd usually be hunting for a dongle at this point but not today. In terms of editing, I use the newer version of Lightroom as I like the way it syncs across all my devices. And to be honest, it's always been quick across every platform I've used it on. And there's no difference here with this new MacBook. Everything felt nice and smooth. And I'd even say the exporting times were a little quicker than I'm used to, which is nice. Generally speaking, I edit all of my photos in a very similar manner for my Instagram. Pushing colors to a pastel hue and adding grain is something I've always loved the look of, so I've got a preset pack that does just that. So if you like how my photos look on Instagram, then I'll drop a link to the preset pack below so you can use them too. Okay, so it's about quarter to five and my MacBook just went to 3% on its power, so I've finally just plugged it back in. And I'm pretty sure if I'd given it a full charge at the start of the day today that I'll be on around 30% and be able to work happily right into the evening. I don't want to keep harping on about it, but my old MacBook Pro, the 16 inch one, which I have right here, would have died twice over by this time. And I'm not exaggerating, when you open like creative apps on these older Macs, um, you can just watch the battery die fly down. And I did notice it drained the battery definitely more than I was expecting, I think, on that one, but it was way, way better than this. Also, the fans on this would spool up pretty quickly the second I'd open InDesign or doing more complex edits in Lightroom like I have done today. Um, and the amazing thing about this, and I know it's an M1 feature in general, is that it stayed whisper quiet. The fans didn't come on at all today, which was really impressive, and it didn't get hot at all. I used it a lot on my lap when I was on my lunch break and stuff watching videos and usually that would heat up quite quickly but on that one just nothing at all and it's just super super nice. So overall the battery life I found really really impressive today and the fact that it can go this long without a charge would just make me super super happy to not put a charger in my bag if I knew I was going out for a few hours or something like that. So yeah, colour me impressed. After sorting that, it doesn't look like I'm getting any feedback today, so I say goodbye to my clients for the day via chat or email and take a note of when I'll be working with them again. Usually around 5pm I'll try my best to sign off for the day and spend the rest of the evening away from the computer, although it really does rarely end up that way. With that in mind though, today is different as I really wanted to test out Premiere Pro on this new MacBook. I edit all of my videos on there and while I know Final Cut performance on these Macs is stunning, I'm fully into the Adobe ecosystem and work across a PC and a Mac, so I need something that can do both. And I'm really happy to say that performance in Premiere Pro was really rather excellent. I was expecting it to struggle a little with multiple streams of 4K, along with color grades and other small edits, but it handled it like a champ, which was really wonderful to see. Sadly though, this did all come to somewhat of a halt. While the timeline and scrubbing performance was near perfect, the export times were far from. I loaded up my previous YouTube video, which is a very typical project from me. It's about 10 minutes in length, has a few layers of 4K here and there, some color grading and plenty of grain effects. And on my 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019, the export time was around 12 minutes. And sadly, the M1 Pro MacBook was nearly double that at 22 minutes. I'm not sure if this is a case of needing more optimization on Adobe's end or if the 14 GPU cores are to shoulder the blame, but it was disheartening to see when it had outperformed in every other way. 
One of my main goals with getting this new MacBook was to try and replace the cross-platform nature that I'm currently still in. My main computer is still a desktop PC, and despite it being Pocky's favourite place to sit in the house, I no longer game on it and I can't take it anywhere with me. And my 16-inch MacBook Pro is wonderful, but it doesn't measure up to this new MacBook, and I feel like its lifetime is limited now that Apple have moved over to Apple Silicon. So I still feel like I'm in a strange limbo. I'm not sure if the 14 inch really solves my cross platform issues. And if I'm looking for that, maybe I need more than this base model can offer. And perhaps there's one video editing solution which is becoming the elephant in the room. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up another average day in the life of me during freelance and some YouTube work on the side with this new 14 inch MacBook Pro. If you've picked up one of these new MacBooks, then let me know in the comments below how you're finding it. Oh, and if you have made it this far into the video, drop a sushi emoji in that comment too so I can see who's watching right to the end. I've got loads of thoughts about this new MacBook Pro though and whether it is indeed the right thing for me to switch to, so expect to see lots more videos on that coming soon. As ever, if you like the video, pop a like on the way out, that would be massive and I'll see you all in the next one.